YouTube creators are duck, ducking outrage by its swearing policy. <laughs> so that's very interesting what YouTube decided to do. Um, let me read this article by The Verge. Uh, so what do they say? They're saying that um, YouTube creators are ducking outrage by its swearing policy. The company is saying it's making some adjustment to adjust the concerns. Uh, so at exactly 80 seconds into his, his video, YouTube is run by fools. Pro ZD make his feeling on the platform's recent restriction on foul language very clear clear. That's the dumbest effing shit I've ever heard. Uh, the timing was deliberate, meant to test the company's updated approach to profanity announced in November. That's what I'm looking for. So here's what they said. Uh, where is it? Okay, November 2022. So I received the email, but I was looking for this. We are we are we updated our guidelines. Let me see. Our guidelines to include both clearer language, specific guidelines change, and changes to add sustainability. Uh, so, adult content, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, violence, sensitive event, inappropriate language. Something they change is that. Our approach to profanity is changing. All varieties of profanity are not treated equally, meaning that they are not differentiated based on level of severity. For example, light, moderate, strong, or extreme. We are not treating hell and damn as profanity anymore. Therefore, profanity used in, used in titles, thumbnails, or in the video's first seven seconds, or used constantly throughout the video may not receive ad revenue. Meaning that, uh, what a mountain of inspiration, meaning that if you are on YouTube and you speak uh, in the first seven seconds, right? If in the first seven, the in, if in the first seven, seven seconds of your video, you swear, you use some words, right? Swear words, then they demonetize, demonetize your video. And people are starting to feel like on this platform, you can't really talk anymore like you talk usually because you're scared of saying the wrong word. Uh, listen, you, you're even scared to, to talk about uh, pathologies now because you might be demonetized because of things that are now proven to be actually fact but that back in the day everybody was saying no you can't say that about this and that and it's becoming harder and harder for creators to be able to just be themselves on the platform if you used to talk a certain way and it's not meant in a bad way the algorithm might just heard you hear you say some words and there you go so now uh Every creator has been pissed about it. I'm sorry, I have allergies. I actually forgot to take my pill. Uh, Pro ZD is far from the only creator speaking out about the changes as YouTube is seemingly on a demonetization spree that's affecting creators' paychecks. From the jump, creator says that YouTube communication has felt subpar, as always. Some had to learn about the changes after they went to Twitter for help. And they say it's been hard to get a handle of how exactly the rules are being applied because something they did that I think has been a little not a great idea is that they decided to uh, to enforce this not only on new videos but also on old videos. So listen, if there's some new rules in town, and listen, they say starting now you cannot say the word. Geronimo. Let's let's take an example without swearing. Let's try to be ad friendly or kid friendly, whatever. So you cannot say the word Ger Geronimo anymore uh, in the first twenty seconds of your video. But let's imagine that you start every 
every single video, man, let's say you have 5,000 videos in your channel and every video starts with, hi, my crazy Geronimos, this is episode whatever. The, the rule being retroactive makes your 5,000 videos demonetized. So if you used to make 4,000 euros a month from your videos, and that's your livelihood, you're a full YouTube creator, you go from making 4,000 a month to making nothing anymore because they decided to demonetize all your videos because they are trying to please the advertisers, who or whatever. And at least at a point, uh, it's starting to be too much for creators. They are starting to look for other options and other platforms where they can speak freely. And when, listen, you can uh, talk a certain way or uh, not be uh, under the, 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 the constant threat of the woke people because you're gonna say something and they decide that, oh, this is offensive when I believe the intent is more important than the words. So if, of course, some words are just evil, but a lot of words taken out of context can be seen as inappropriate, but in context, somebody who's not uh, in bad faith will say, no, it's, it's uh we understand what he meant that was not made to be harmful so the intent is very important and all these platforms are uh, are starting to want to force people into i mean it's not the platforms the people that work at those platforms the people that we put in those places for whatever reason they are trying to make the platform in in whatever they believe is the right way of being but Again, to me, all these all these American concepts might not apply in France, in Portugal, in Congo, in Saudi Arabia, everywhere in the world. So it is more and more problematic to have all these American platforms that are trying to fascinate the world into what they believe is right and because of their cultural war out there. Us out of America, we might not be concerned with some things and we might not care, but they are forcing everybody to care about a lot of things that are really in their culture. And because the platform is American, if you have another platform that is American as well, you might have the same problem because all these people are in this together and they all have a certain way of thinking and a certain way of viewing the world. But, and when you have another platform like TikTok, for example, that is a Chinese platform and that is now being the place where all the young people go uh, and all of a sudden, yeah, uh, it's a platform for uh, Chinese spies, or oh, they look into your phone, this and that, all oh, your information is being sent to China. Yeah, but my information, me, French citizen living in Portugal, is sent to the US as well. So, yeah, but with the good guy, yeah, are you? So, I, I think we need three, four, five big platforms like YouTube, same level, same quality that give you the option to go to pl platforms where, and we need competition. So I don't, I don't agree of what all the Americans are saying because they wanna continue to have a monopolistic uh, uh, vision of the world and uh, power, soft power through those platforms where they want to have TikTok completely removed from the US, banned from the US. And if they ban it from the US, they will pressure Europe to ban it as well because everybody now prefers doing TikTok. So these guys are playing the dirty game. They prefer banning TikTok rather than, and, and, and they're copying TikTok. If you look like Instagram has the, has the shorts, uh, uh, no, YouTube has the shorts, Instagram has the, the, re, the, the, Instagram has the reels, YouTube has the shorts to do like TikTok, uh, 
short form virtual content. Everybody's trying to copy TikTok. And because TikTok is winning, now they want to ban them from, from, from the country. Because, yeah, all the kids are there. Yeah, make a good platform where we we feel free that we can talk and put whatever content and give our opinions, even if they are not the opinions that are shared by the governments or whoever think they have the the monopole of the the truth. And yeah, it, it is. I really believe that uh, YouTube and it's a platform that I love. Uh, I owe a lot to YouTube, but I believe YouTube needs a real competitor that is not American. That is like maybe a French one. Uh, we need one in Africa that is made by African people. Uh, we need one uh, in the, for for in every continent. Should we should we we need a, a Chinese one, like maybe and and we need those platforms like TikTok, like 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 Twitter, to to do the to be the competition of those platforms. So that yeah, you're on Twitter and you can watch this show on Twitter as well, and you can watch it on Instagram as well, and on TikTok as well, and now, and then people do their choices. We definitely need that so that uh, uh, these people will not take arbitrary decisions uh, just because, yeah, they want to, they, 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 they want all of us to be part of their, their, their fuckery uh, out there in the U.S. Shit, I was trying to not say swear words, but. You see, like, then you're scared to be yourself. You're scared to say fuck. Because you're going to get demonetized. And it makes no sense. At a point, like, uh, everybody here is more than 18 years old. And my videos are not made for kids. So I should be able to speak the way I want. And not have somebody said, yeah, but kids are watching this. So, uh, yo. In short, YouTubers think the policy change has been a bit of a shit show, or as they may have to describe in their videos, an unfortunate situation. Now, after weeks of complaint, YouTube is promising to fix it. In recent week, we've heard from many creators regarding this update, YouTube spokesperson told The Verge. That feedback is important for us and we are in the process of making some adjustments to this policy to address their concerns. We will follow up shortly with our creator community as soon as we have more to share. YouTube cracked down on foul language is part of a set of rules meant to ensure that videos are suitable for advertisers. Who are these advertisers that are making the rule? Listen, we are creators. Yes, we need the ads to make money, but you need our content to show your ads. So there should be some balance here. Not Nike arrive and say, oh, listen, there's too much this or there's not enough this or whatever. We need more llamas in videos. And all of a sudden, like, if you don't have llamas in your channel, you are a uh, llama phobic. <sighs> YouTube cracked down on foul language is part of da, da, da. According to the updated language, if, if a creator swears within the first 15 seconds of a video, their video might not be eligible to run ads. It's even more likely a video will be demonetized if it has a curse word within the first seven seconds. A video may, may also be ineligible if a creator swears throughout the majority of the video. If the, the language is squishy, creators may be demonetized and there's no definition of what YouTube majority of the video line is. Words are mostly treated equally under the policy. Calling, calling someone an asshole is as much as ding as calling them a motherfucker, though damn and hell are fine. In short, cons content that contains profanity or vulgarity may not be suitable for advertising, as YouTube guideline puts it. If that were the entire story, creators probably wouldn't have much of a problem with it. It's understandable that it's that advertisers like Apple or Disney wouldn't want their family-friendly messages immediately followed by a tirade of colorful language. Again. All right. So if I'm Apple or Disney and I have uh, a big billboard uh, in the streets, and somebody is committing a crime under this billboard. What you gonna do now? You're gonna say, now nah, we, we want our billboard only in places where 
the people who are not racist can see it? Or are you going to say that we don't want racists to drink our Coca-Cola? No, on, on this part, you don't care. So the, the hypocrisy is amazing to me. Um, uh, da, 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 da. But YouTube is not giving creators a chance to adapt to the new policy. It's supplying rules to videos uploaded before the change. Potentially years of content for many creators. And I don't think it is exactly fair to punish all the videos that were made before the rules came into place. Ellis Mark told The Verge. It's been a common complaint among, among people covering the issue. They feel like YouTube is expecting them to not only create videos for the standards is that it has now, but once it may implement in the future. Yeah, listen, it's uh, LT Game talk about how devastating it was to sit refreshing the YouTube studio page and watching videos from over a year ago or two, they get demonetized. And yeah, listen, and having their reach limited. It doesn't help that YouTube has gone back and forth on swearing. In April 21, the platform updated its rule to allow video with usage of moderate profanity, example, shit or bitch, in the first 30 seconds to be monetizable. If you took that rule, if you took that rule change to heart, you may have videos that are no longer allowed to earn ad revenues now. So it makes no sense. They also have been complained that YouTube not, is not commenting the change clearly. In a popular video about the situation, a YouTuber, whatever his name, described the company as treating its policy changes like a government secret and said that his YouTube contact even wasn't aware of the change until looking it up. You absolutely, YouTube absolutely does not communicate major changes like this in an effective way whatsoever. It's infuriating. Um, I only found out about it in early January and it was because of a video of mine got demonetized and people on Twitter told me about the policy. Shaw also said he was having difficulties even telling which of his videos were being affected by the policy. It's hard to say exactly how many lost monetization due to the new policy change, but estimated it was little less than a hundred. That's still a lot of videos. The lack of notification when a video runs a file, the new guidelines is even made worse because YouTube is applying the rules inconsistently. What gets hit is, incom is completely arbitrary. I've had video re-monetized re only to be demonetized again the next day. It's a constant stress to worry about. Creators argue that systems put in place by YouTube to rectify being demonetized are of little help and can, and can initially be vague about why videos were restricted in the first place. The platform can provide detailed feedback on why a video has been age restricted uh, or demonetized if a creator submits it for manual review. But doing so comes with risk. If your video falls, the review creator will be stuck with the video being ad limited or demonetized for good happened to me etc 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 whatever well listen uh, i really believe that uh i've said it before we gave way too much power to the platforms that's all i can tell you um and yeah we are arriving to this point where uh we have platforms that we use and some people, this is our livelihood, right? And uh, they, they they hold us by the the balls. Because you can have all your all your stuff demonetized, and now you can't pay your rent all of a sudden. And if you leave, if you left your job to be YouTube full time, listen, I could be a full time YouTuber. My channel generates, I don't know three to four thousand euros every month so if all my videos were demonetized and my only revenue was youtube what i what do i do now and i i can see on the studio that for example some of the videos i take from uh, tiktok of people dancing on my videos get demonetized for example uh i'm not gonna play it here because but there's this beautiful brazilian girl who did uh 
I cannot post. Okay, she did a she did a TikTok. Uh, so this girl, right? She did a TikTok with my my video, and I put it on YouTube. And directly, what I had was that this video is running limited ads because childrens. Okay, there's no childrens on my channel. Now I have this video that I put of uh, two people dancing compa or kizomba or whatever they're dancing on. Uh, so this video and this video as well is demonetized. So if I go on monetization, it is telling me that this video has been confirmed by manual review that is not suitable for most advertisers. You can play it, but you will not receive ads. And you can download it if you want and post it somewhere else. And it's just people dancing. So they don't even realize that I have a bunch of video of people dancing. But I mean, most of my videos don't have monetization problems. But a lot of them, I have to request them to review them before. Um, but as a creator, you want to be in a platform where uh, the people are not abusing. It's it's just that. I, listen, as a platform, you have to protect yourself. As and and you want to have the ads, etc. I understand, but you also have to take care of your creators first. If not, you look you 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 feel like you are more about the money than the creators. And as a creator, I would love to see YouTube stand. To the advertisers from time to time and tell them hey listen this is the platform you want your ads here that's how it goes if apple say okay in this case we will not put ads and pepsi says that and nike says that and instagram tell them the same thing and all the rest of the platform tell them the same thing then they will realize yeah we're missing on millions and millions and millions on of of people who are only on youtube all day and they will come back crawling, saying, okay, we will put out ads. But YouTube, soon as you tell them we're going to remove the ads, us, the creator, we pay. And I believe that it is a bad idea. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, like I said, to me, the solution is more platforms. It's too bad that platforms like Vimeo, like Vidler, like Dailymotion... Uh, we're not able to to be as strong as as YouTube. Uh, an idea that I have that would be amazing, in my opinion, would be that Netflix, which is we all use Netflix, right? Imagine if Netflix and Amazon Prime, for example, or Netflix and Spotify. Imagine if both of them decided to add YouTube. Imagine that. If they decided to add you, uh, not YouTube, but if they decided to add user generated content as a new tab on Netflix. Imagine now you have, so when you go, imagine if you go to Netflix, let me go to Netflix. Imagine if you go to Netflix and not only you have, you know, the normal stuff, right? The videos and stuff, TV shows, yeah, movies, all right, new and popular, my lists, and then you had a new tab of, I don't know, content by normal people like us. And maybe live videos like this one, like Club Shoutout on Netflix. And imagine if Spotify did the same thing. If you go to Spotify now, because Spotify, what they're doing now, they they also have a, now they have a, how they call this? Now they have, they also have podcasts, right? So for example, I have, I have all my stuff, but as you can see, you have Club Shoutout as a podcast now. Club Shoutout. And you can listen to all the episodes on a, on a, on as a as a podcast, 
And if you play them, oh, it's not on the, oh, sorry, it's in the app. Well, how do I go to see? Boom, there you go. If you play the episode, you have the video as well. Look at that. Oh, you can see. Too bad, wait. Oops, that was not a good idea. Yeah, you have the video, see? You can watch the episode and you can put it full screen. You can watch on your, P your TV from Spotify. And the rest is on audio, on podcast, Apple Music, whatever. So you can subscribe to this show as a podcast as well because I re-upload everything to Spotify. Now, imagine if... I could be live or if, if Spotify and Netflix decided to become competition to YouTube. Now we would talk in French. And all these people would stop abusing their power. So that's, that's, that I believe is, is one solution. Is that a, a player because... Though platforms like Rumble and stuff, they, yeah, it's interesting, but they're not well done. Like, you know, um, I mean, they could be, yeah, they could be just recreate their UX to be great. But a platform like, like Netflix that everybody has, if they add user generated content supported by ads or supported by subscription, since everybody's already paying for Netflix, right? If they can watch, when they watch your show, you get some money, not even from ads, but just from views. Yo. That would be a word, a world, uh, if they have, let's say, Spotify. Um, Spotify, Amazon, um, HBO Max, um, Twitter, uh, Netflix, all deciding, hey, we're going to have some creators and we're going to invite them there. Now you have a battle between Twitch, YouTube, uh, Rumble, and all these big platforms for who takes your time. Because it's only 24 hours in the day and everybody's competing for these 24 hours. And... And some of these platforms say, no, 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 here you can say whatever you want as long as you are inside of the law. And you can have the opinion you want. You can talk about COVID if you want. You talk about talk about this. You can whatever. You can be blue pill, red pill, da, 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 da. You can have opinions, have debates, and will not prevent you from just even swearing. And then some creators decide, okay, I'm going there. Like if you have like Mr. Beast saying, hey, I'm leaving YouTube and all my content now will be on Spotify, like Joe Rogan did, or, or all my content will be on Netflix now. Listen, something like this, <laughs> game over. All these platform will stop playing with us because now we have the choice. And right now, I know that, listen, I'm live on Twitch right now. There's one person watching on Twitch because I go there not all the time, but the more places you can go and the more the more choice you have and the more people need you the more they care about you because they're scared of you leaving to another platform <laughs> in a platform like youtube yeah i know when it comes to live stream twitch is is really the one but twitch is, is a horrible platform it's it's uh, the 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 design is horrible, it's very bad to use, it's hard to find videos. So when it comes to VOD, YouTube is the king. And it becomes a great platform. But it needs at least two big competitors. The same way Instagram is forced to, to, to update its platform and find and do some new stuff because of TikTok. 
and TikTok is also in competition with Snapchat and now YouTube is in competition with them and everybody's competing for the short, short form vertical video. And the great thing is that you can be big in those four platforms. So you can choose where you go. And if one of them is uh, pissing you off, you can go to another one. When it comes to video, yeah, you can only go on YouTube, sadly for now. My whole channel is synced to Rumble. So if I go to Rumble, um, if I go to Rumble and I search for uh, Keisha, you will see that my channel is here. You see? And all my videos are here as well. So yeah, my whole channel is here, but at least in this platform is, a, yeah, I don't know, but at least every video that I'm putting on YouTube is, is automatically synced to this platform because they have an API that sucks the, everything that comes from YouTube. So, oh yeah, but I mean, nobody follows me there because I don't promote it, but at least I'm there. So if, listen, for whatever reason, my whole YouTube channel disappear like it happened before. I can tell everybody to find me on Rumble, but uh, I still would rather have uh, platforms that are really on a, on, a, on a level. So yeah, it is what it is. What are we gonna do? Nothing. Miss Anti, hello. Vraiment. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be political, politically correct. But yo, come on. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. Anyway. Smelling the jasmine aroma in this green tea. Oh yeah, amazing. <sighs> it's already almost done. I don't have enough for a whole show. Ah, la, la, la. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Rumble, this platform is... Listen, I have a problem with the platform being so ugly. I mean, the main page is okay. It's okay, and there's a lot of people that are being live now. And I think you can be live on both at the same time. I have to see. Maybe I can be live on, on YouTube and Rumble at the same time. That would be, that could be interesting. I mean, some people, yeah. For example, Crypto Arras, he started really doing on Rumble because he got tired of all the crypto videos being, the crypto channel be, being erased out of nowhere. So a lot of people, yeah. They are starting to to go on Rumble. That's true. I mean, I don't need them to to look like YouTube. It's just to me that you have to. I mean, I mean, if you look at my channel, come on, it doesn't look it doesn't look great. Or maybe I have to I have to upload stuff here. I don't know. Let me look at one of my videos, how it looks like. Okay. Okay, ads. Skip the ad. Okay. Quality, 700p. Oh, it's not in full HD? Interesting. I mean, at least the content is here. Uh, I mean, it's getting better since the last time I've seen it. Yeah. Maybe I have to, I have to sign in, maybe. Let me sign in. Account overviews, overview. Where are my channels? 
Can I edit my channels? My channels. Keisha. I have three followers. Can I edit it? Title. Oh, I can have a thumbnail? Yo. Let me add a thumbnail. K to royalty. I can have a backsplash. All right. Let me find a good backsplash. Uh, uh, let me see. Keisha from African Prince. Uh, let me see. I'm going to use this one. Okay, save. Is it saved? Oh, saving. All right. Now let's go to the, uh, let's go see the channel. Hey, much better. Oh, I have to do one at the right dimensions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go here and see what I can do. Okay. There was this platform back in the days, Daily Motion was, and they created it before, before YouTube. But yeah, the French. Does it still exist? Oh my God, it's ugly. Okay. I think I have a channel there. Is my channel still there? Your Zook TV. I see a lot of videos from me. Keisha, there you go. That's my channel. I have oh, 700 followers, 1 million views. Yeah, I stopped posting there, but I was posting there before YouTube. But see, I don't know, the platform is, ah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This platform is, is ugly. Listen, I have a hard time working with ugly platforms. I'm sorry. It is what it is. That's the way I am. But I need YouTube needs real competition just to keep them in check. Uh, just like Apple when they only had, when it was only the iPhone they were starting to to be a little extremists in their rules and the fact that people had the choice of buying Samsung phones and Sony phones and Google phones kept them in check kept them kept them forced to innovate and and to be scared of their users leaving the platform to go to another platform he made them listen to the users when users are telling you we don't like this thing you're doing and because of that, I'm buying another phone. You think about it, the next phone you do. You're like, okay, hey, we heard you. Uh, when they start removing some, some, some functionalities from the Macs, a lot of people decided to buy PCs. So they added all these functionalities back. And it's important for customers to have a choice. Always. A, a monopole... A monopoly is always bad for the users. Always, always, whatever the business. That's the way it's always been. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes.